Hello YouTube, it is the 14th of November I think and it's another mild day, about 14 degrees, not much wind and uh, I just wanted to highlight what um, I've been doing towards the wildlife in the garden and how important I think it is. Um, last year, just over on the border, just over there, I just fenced a small patch off and just threw some uh, wildflower seeds in, it was on the grass and uh, a lot of them came and it was just a mass of hoverflies and uh, honeybees and bumblebees all through the summer and uh, so I decided to try um, another patch in different areas so um, I put plastic over the lawn here and it was on all summer and uh, I sowed this in the uh, second week in September and as you can see, the wildflowers have, uh, are all starting to come up. Uh, some I recognise as weeds that I've been pulling out of the garden. Um, but that's all part of nature. No, um, a weed is only something, a plant where you don't want it. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this grows. I've had to fence it off because of the dog. Um, but I'm hoping I can get some hazel and perhaps make some hazel hurdles to put round make it a bit more uh, easy on the eye. Uh, but that's coming on quite nicely. And if you can attract these uh, beneficial insects, um, hoverflies and things like that, they'll eat your green fly and your black fly. And also it's, uh, uh, it's good food for the, for the birds. I've always, uh, we, I think we've got four feeding stations for the birds and uh, the garden's never quiet it's always alive with activity and it's lovely to sit and watch them and um, i'll just bring you back when these vehicles have gone the bird life is is wonderful around the garden and we do get quite a, an array here um, over here i am doing another wildflower patch this one was sown three weeks after the other one in the first week in October. It does say on the packets to uh, September, October is the best time to grow them. And you can see the difference uh, within three weeks. Uh, not a lot going on in here. I'm sure that um, some will come up in the spring. Uh, if not, I can always re sow in the spring as well. Um, should be quite a nice area, path all the way around. And uh, it's just, it is the gateway to the vegetable patch. Um, as regards the birds, we feed peanuts and sunflower hearts. I do find that the fat balls are a bit messy and uh, the amount of birds that we get soon do get through them. You can see here the spring bulbs are starting to come up already. It is so mild we could do with a bit of a cold spell just to bring nature back together again. Just over here is the patch that I just cordoned off here, let the grass grow and let all the flowers grow. And uh, you could hear it in the polytunnel, um, all the bees buzzing about and hoverflies, it was great. So um, I'll just leave that now and then cut that back in the spring again and see what happens again next year because I've let it self set itself. Across the hedge line there, you can see I've not mowed up to the hedge and I've just let that as it is and the the little frogs that we saw in here, crickets and all sorts, it was absolutely marvellous. And one thing attracts another. So if you can in your gardens, just leave some areas which are a bit more untidy. Nature just moves in. You can see here I've taken the nasturtium plant out and I just put it across the fence line, hoping that uh, there'll be a few self-setters and that uh, that will attract the black fly and the green fly and keep them off your veg so it's a bit of a sacrificial plant um, I'm hoping that the, the whole of this fence line will be covered in them and all my uh, wildflowers when the wildflowers once they've gone to seed I've just sprinkled them all down this fence line and I've done all I've done the same all the way up to the top of the garden right up to where you can see those fir trees at the top And on this side, 
I've done exactly the same. I've let nature take its course up the side of the uh, border. Haven't cut the grass at all. Just threw a few uh, seeds in. And um, this has been full of little tiny frogs. Uh, once they come out of the pond, they've uh, made their way over here. And, uh, and I'm sure a lot of them will be hibernating in there. Uh, a log pile there. I put four stakes in each corner to stop them rolling off and some of that uh, wood is, um, is soft wood which has been decaying for years, it's be full of beetles and it'll rot down slowly and I'm sure there's plenty of wildlife under there. Uh, you can see the fungi, natural fungi just come in uh, which is helping to decay the wood and um, I put some foxgloves around and just let nature take its course. And it's been an absolute um, abundance of wildlife around here. I've even seen a little weasel running into the, into the log pile and he came out with a mouse and ran back across the garden. And um, that's uh, precious moments like that are great. You don't you see that every day, but to see it in your, in your garden is great. I put bark down and just planted a few small plants uh, just to see what comes. I've got four rhubarb plants here. I've uh, topped them up with uh, homemade compost and they're, these are what I sowed myself uh, two years ago from seed and they were in pots the first year and last year I planted them out and so this coming year will be the first time that we'll be picking off those. Um, four is probably too many for the wife and I but I'm sure we can give some away and it'll give cover as well to uh, all the wildlife. The pond, uh, you're not getting a very good view of it I'm afraid. I have covered it over because of all these leaves coming down. Leaves in the pond don't go together. Um, but I will give you a closer look at it. But everything here that um, I've put around the pond has all come from the hedgerows around here. Um, piece of, large tree trunks and and uh, bark and all sorts of things that I've put around the sides um, and it, I'm just going to leave it now to rot down and do whatever it wants. Um, if you see here you can see that something's been boring out of the this tree stump and with the holes in it I bet there's loads of beetles in there. I believe something like a stag beetle can stay inside um, as a larvae for uh, up to 20 years before it comes out. So uh, all these rotten pieces of wood that you see, they are full of wildlife even though you can't see them. And it all brings a balance to the garden. I've uh, planted ivy around the edges uh, in one or two places. And I should just let that ramble around the side of the pond. Some plants have worked, some plants haven't. I've got some old tree stumps. And here's another example of a bit of wildlife um, flowers. That's what, 18 inches by five foot. And uh, that's been a picture all summer and the bees have been all over it. That galvanized water trough there, there's no bottom in that whatsoever. And some of the soil out of the pot when I dug the pond out has gone into there. So the, from the very bottom of the pond, so there won't be nutrients in that. And I've sown that with a, a mixture of poppies only about three weeks ago. And um, I'm surprised at how many have actually come up. How many will survive the winter? I don't know. But um, hopefully that'll be a picture. And uh, just a pile of stones and rocks there and just let nature take its course. And I'm sure there's lots of insects that'll be hibernating in there. And all this will be so beneficial to the vegetable gardener. Uh, and anybody with a garden. Uh, the birds will feed on the insects um, and the bugs, they'll keep it off your vegetable patch. Um, this year has definitely been the least amount of bugs that I've had. Black fly, green fly, uh, carrot fly. I have had one carrot with carrot fly, but it all helps. Nature is a balance and it uh, looks after itself. I've um, put little log piles around the pond in different places like this and I'm sure that they will be 
absolutely full of bugs and insects and possibly newts and, and little frogs hibernating over the winter. It's something that I can always add to and I can build that right up to the top. I put a little insect hotel, built that myself. That is actually a, a pallet collar on one side with um, some wood across the back uh, to, to give it a back. And then I've just um, filled it with all sorts of things from around the garden and um, from the surrounding areas. And I'm sure that that will be full of all sorts of things. I think up there, that's the stems off um, my sunflowers from last year and bits of bark and some wood and some old tiles. And then a pile of bricks all stuck together with some slates on top. Be full of um, spiders, lace wings and all sorts. Uh, so it's a lovely place to sit out here and just watch everything going, going on in the garden. I don't know if you can see that there. That is a large piece of bark there placed around the pond. And you can hear the toads croaking at night underneath that. Uh, that's just priceless. This piece of wood here is part of a tree trunk. It must be, I bet you it's 100 years old at least. Um, anybody that watches my channel knows that um, that field there completely floods and we've had it from about five metres from this telegraph pole here. And uh, when it receded, that was in the middle of the field. So I topped and tailed it to the side of the field and put it in the trailer. And um, I think that looks lovely. Um, I've put um, leaf mould underneath it and bark and I expect that there'll be some frogs in that. And you can see the fungi there growing and the moss on the one side of it. Looks great and it's great for the wildlife and it will help in your garden. All the edges, I don't keep them too tidy. I just keep the past tidy where I, where we go and I mow the the uh, centre of the paths and in the hen pen I leave all the nettles to grow on the one side um, it stops people from the field seeing what's in there and also that's great for the wildlife caterpillars and also for uh, me cutting them down and making nettle tea uh, that bin there is full of water and full of nettles for next year and that'll be my nettle tea and um, I've got another bin just behind there and that's full of uh, comfrey which uh, was out, out of my own garden so if you can look after nature nature will definitely look after you and um, it's easy on the eye and it's good for your mental health as well um, we don't we live such busy lives it's nice to just sit, sit back and relax and look what's going on around you because I can assure you there's plenty if you can find space for a bit of wildlife in your garden, let me know what you're doing and um, how much it attracts or try some for next season. You only need a little tiny patch or a couple of little tiny patches, put some wildflower seeds in and uh, let's look after these bees and insects and that the birds and everything else will look after itself. Take care everybody, have a great week, bye for now.